Hello YouTubers and welcome to Heroes Hour. My name is Kitchen, and this is a game that I will be introducing you to today. It's a new game out uh, by a single developer called Benjamin. And I believe it's his only game. So it, it I've been offered a free VQ for this one. It's, it's uh, also being published by Goblins Publishing, which some of you may recognize, especially if you've been following my channel. Uh, we've done Legend of Keepers, uh, As Far As The Eye, and a few others that are from the same publisher. And I'm very excited to share anything by Goblins Publishing, usually. They are always, in my eyes, a success. And so Heroes Hour. Uh, it's still in beta, whatever that means. Well, uh, today I'll show you the tutorial, and then we'll go in and do some actual gameplay. Uh, there, as you can see, it's like a little war game kind of thing, but you play a single character, I think. I love this little intro screen, the main menu, it's just... I don't even know what I'm looking at, but it's just things fighting, and I love it. So, let's dive into the tutorial and learn how to play this game. Let's go... It's supposed to be an RPG, but there is like RTS resources up here in the top, and I can scroll around. All right. Oh, here it says, Welcome to Heroes Hour. This tutorial will teach you the basics. You are currently looking at the adventure map and your hero stands there in the center. To start, select your hero by clicking on them on the map. Done. You can move your hero around the map by right click wherever you want to go. Your hero can also interact with objects on the map. Go and pick up that pile of gold just to the north. Oh, this reminds me of Heroes of Might and Magic. Oh, yeah. Oh. Interesting. Or Age of Wonders, if you will. Gold is the most important resource in the game, and in any game. <laughs> Rock and stone. It is used to build up towns and increase the size of armies. You now make your hero go to the campfire over to the west left. There. All right, I shall. Oh, your hero can only move so far each day. But that campfire just allowed you to move four extra steps. Okay, this is, again, Heroes of Might and Magic. Use them to travel northwards. As you travel, more of the map will be revealed. And you will find a sawmill with zombies protecting it. Oh, oh hold on. Can I do this little thing? Yeah. Let's see if I... Oh, I can probably use the minimap to scroll around like that. Yes, close. Before we go on, I will go quickly and look at the settings with you guys. Um, right now, I'm playing it in, in windowed mode, which is why you have that black border around the, the screen. And it's not fitting the whole screen for my, so this, for me. So this is just letting you know that there are some, some minor UI issues with the game. There's some settings in here that I don't really know what we are supposed to do with yet. If I should tamper with it, I have clicked smooth text on. I like that. And you can go unit color, increasing the, the size of the unit's colors. It, it'll make sense later. So I just want to quickly show you that. Resume game. Something about some undead somewhere. Oh, I missed it. Open. Ah. You will find a sawmill with zombies protecting it. Up here. Close. Ending your turn, let enemy players take the turn. End turn. Each day, your hero has their movement points refilled. You can also gain resources daily from certain buildings, like a sawmill up there. The zombies are defending it, but you can attack them by moving towards them. Notice how the path turns red when approaching a fight. Mm -hmm. Okay, start battle. So this is a combat arena kind of thing. It's looking interesting. Before your battle starts, you can move around your regiments, which are marked by banners. Are they? Oh yeah, here, the little red banner there. Uh -huh. And here. You have two different units. Goblin gunners attack from range, while gargoyles are fast melee units. Click start to let the battle commence. Misspelling. Oh well. Um... Where is my cursor? There you go. Okay. Where do I start the battle over here? 
Unit power field, it's 60 out of 260. Unit power in reserve. And they have 12 hit points on that guy. If I hover over him, we can see he has power, health, damage, speed. He is slow. This creature moves slowly across the battlefield. While a gargoyle is flying and inert, cannot be affected by poison, confusion, fear, petrification, charm, or burning. So he's like a statue. Goblin gunner with a uh, a rifle. Interesting. Creature is able to fire projectile. He's also slow. So could I advance him? I would think. Oh, look at that. They like push each other around when I move him. I don't know. I want the, the gunner hitting the target earlier in the battle, I think. Start battle. Oh, and there's multiple. Oh, that's the number of them that there were. So again, kind of like Heroes of Might and Magic, but here they split up into uh, like little squads when the fight starts. And my hero is getting murdered. Interesting. My hero is like a lion. Theo. Level 1 artisan. Mm hmm. Combat results. So, what is this? We, we defeated them. Theo gained XP. I don't know if we lost any. Now that the zombies have been defeated, you can pick up the resources. Wood is useful for constructing buildings. You should also claim the sawmill by moving your hero to touch the, its grey flag. As long as you control the sawmill, it will give you two wood for each day that passes. Noted. So let's go there, here, and then the little grey flag there. A little dude ran onto the sawmill. Did we lose him for that? No, we still have them in our army here. You lose army units in battle, so you should get reinforcements before you go into battle again. Move on to the east until you find the town, then take control of it. Uh, you can also pick up any stray resources on your way there. I guess they are telling me not to go for this fight. It also says impossible when I hover over here, but it looks like a little a wish. All right, in here. Interesting. I think I'm supposed to... I don't know if walking on the road makes me faster. So, Ivory Palace. Couldn't quite make it there. I love that my little units, they run around me when I walk around the map. That's cool. Giving it like an air of they're actually there and not just a part of your hero somehow. Ivory Palace. Towns allow you to create units to expand your army. By Do this by pressing the button with the man with a pitchfork. Pressing the button with the man of the pitchfork. That's down here. This brings up the unit creation screen. Then pay gold to create available goblin gunners. Create, oh, create here. Okay. We made 13 of those. There's a lot of buildings in town that do, well, that all do something different. You can mouse over to find out what they do. If you construct a tower, you'll get access to the next type of soldiers. It gives you the option of building gargoyles or scrolls. Okay. Tower. Where do we see this? Gate of Divinity. Dwelling that allows you to create incarnation or Jotun. Fort. Greatly increases the weekly number of units from a chosen dwelling in town. Proves the defenses of the town and creates units to defend the town when attacked. Okay, tower. Here. Dwelling that allows you to create gargoyle or scroll. Weekly number of units is 6 and 9 respectively. Can be built. Click. Tower. Dwelling that allows you to do yeah, the same. Can be built. Construct. So scroll is a unit. Interesting. A little flying animated scroll. Not a scroll from Marvel. Huh. Uh, oh, so I have to dedicate the building to one of the two. You can only construct one building per day. If you get the tower, you can now create those units too. There is a weekly no limit of how many units can be created of each type. Next, travel north, east and send your hero to the minor shrine. I'm going to go ahead and assume that stacking gargoyles is better than uh, 
uh, going into a new unit type because I think they uh, stacking makes sense. Probably have a limit on how many spots in the, is in our army. So like that, exit. You can only construct one building per day. Yes. Next, travel northeast and send your hero to the minor shrine. I shall. That must be this one up there. It is. Okay. Off we go. Got some crystals. Yep. And gold. Then minor shrine. Teaches a visiting hero a minor spell. The minor shrine. Well, let me try that again. Minor shrine taught your hero the spell named Sauna. Summon Anima. When you next enter battle, you can choose to use this spell to more easily defeat your enemies. Casting a spell costs mana, which will slowly regenerate day by day. Now please continue north until you find the ore mine and attack the units defending it. Yes, another battle. Go, go, go. Okay. What do they have? They have... Oh, let's read here. Once the battle has started, you can cast spells by choosing them within the spellbook and then choosing where on the battlefield to cast that spell. Oh, so I can affect the battle while it's ongoing. Mm-hmm. Not like in a, a true auto battler then, which I thought this was. You can, for instance, summon units on top of enemy ranged units. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, my hero got his butt kicked in the previous fight, so I want to keep him back a bit and maybe just like do this. Have him in the corner there. It's going to be a lot of goblin gummers rushing forward here. We have pack hunters on the enemy side. These are like wolves, I suppose. This creature is able to attack more often. Quick strikes. Aha. Uh -huh. Anima. Oh, that's the thing I can summon. Uh, this creature is able to fly, which makes it move faster, dodge enemies whenever it it can't attack. It is able to grab enemies close to death and drop them from great heights. It can also fly over walls. What? Nice. Okay. And they have a ranger. Arrow rain. This creature has a chance to fire a rain of arrows, which triggers, uh, which strikes a larger area, thus damages more enemies. Oh, I can choose defense or attack, like a, a, a general. Stands for my guys. Interesting. I might even want to go defense, you know. We have fairly good ranged power. What if I chose to do something like this? Oh, look at the, the, this little screen that pops up here when I hover my guys. I can... Oh, I can split them up. Uh, how do I... <laughs> I want to bunch them back up. Oh, and it worked. Okay. Interesting. Oh, shift. Is that shift? Yes. Okay, so that's how it works. Huh. I don't know if this is smart, but let's try it out. Defensive stance. And my hero... Where's this spell screen? All right, let's start it. Here's the spell thing. That throws the screen while I was casting the thing. And they are coming to me, and we are holding a defensive line here. They have kicked my gargoyle's butts. Uh, attack! Hmm. I think we will win. Oh, we can summon anime again. No, I don't have enough mana. Ah, the mana is here. Four. And it costs six. Long story short, I think their ranged units was was better, maybe. Oh, he's running away. Look at that. They could also retreat. <laughs> so we lost some gargoyles is what it's showing me here. Ah, yeah. Five of our 16 gargoyles were lost. But all in all, not as bad as it was looking, I think. Theo gained XP. Each time you fight, your hero gains experience points. Now your hero has reached level 2. Congratulations! You can choose what type of hero you want them to become by picking one of the two possible skills. Move over to see what they can do, and then choose one. Alchemy. 
This hero gains ore after every battle. Ore can be spent in the Arch of Aetherforge in town to create units, spells or other effects. Amount of ore increases with skill level or royalty. Decreases the resource cost for creating units in any of your towns. And then it leads into other things. But going on with my gut, I will take, pick alchemy for now. This is just a tutorial, so it doesn't matter all that much. You can see for more information about your hero stats and skills by double clicking on them on the map or double clicking on their portrait in the bottom left. You currently your hero currently knows two skills, both of them rank one. Each skill can be leveled up several times for better or better effects. Above skills are the hero stats. Mouse over to see what they can do. You can click the spell book to see what spells your hero knows. After wars, go and claim that ore mine. Okay. Spell book here. And they can have items. Attack. Defense. Increases the health of creatures in the hero's army by 3% per stat. Oh, okay. Same for the attack. Increases the creature's damage dealt. Probably also himself. Interesting. Knowledge. Knowledge increases the max mana by 10 and daily mana regeneration by 1 per stat. So we have 1 mana regeneration currently. Means every 6 days I can cast my spell. That's not that much. Spell power. Increase the effectiveness of all spells. Cast by a hero by 5% per stat and decreases spell cooldown. So if you could cast multiples. Very interesting. Luck. Luck gives a 4% stat chance for each attack by your creatures to be luck strikes dealing extra damage and larger area with a great knockback but we have zero of that and morale gives your creatures extra per chance per second to per stat to enter high morale where they move twice as fast and attack twice as fast for 10 seconds again kind of reminiscent of heroes of might and magic there's a clear inspiration going on here and i love it Go and claim that ore mine. I will. There's a little weak tracker over here that is going on. I'm not sure what that means. Probably we get some stuff at the end of the week or something. Each day you should construct another building in town. Right. Buildings are expensive, but they are like a uh, key to winning. You can just, As you construct more buildings, your town develops and give, giving access to more buildings as the game progresses. Double-click your town and construct the infirmary. Infirmary. I wonder if there is there like a building browser, maybe? Yes. Infirmary. Here. 2,000. And it costs some mercury, crystals, and sulfur. Yes. Double clicking here worked. Taking army losses can be your downfall. If you construct an infirmary in town, half of your losses in future battles will be saved and added to the town's garrison. Nice. After combat, the infirmary will save half the dead units. Only one infirmary can be active per faction, but additional infirmaries for the same faction raise the percentage of saved units. Only one infirmary can be active per faction, but additional infirmaries for the same faction. Raise the percentage of saves. So there can be multiple of the same faction. I'm not sure I understood that. Could go explore the map with your hero. Be careful about what enemies you attack. You can mouse over to see the difficulty. Usually it's best to fight moderate and easy difficulty enemies. As your hero's army grows stronger, more enemies become easy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, so they're sending wood and ore to the town with little uh, carts. Hmm. Challenging. You're impossible. Easy. Hard. Ruins. What if I went up to the ruins here real quick? You may take on the regiment or should discharge them. Titan gloves. Basic gloves. Extra attack and minus one creature speed. Part of the Titan set. Oh, bonus with three, three species, uh, pieces. 
Units become immune to knockback and have more health, or we can gain 13 gob goblin gunners. I'll take the gloves. There. Three extra attack, so that's 9% extra attack damage for all creatures in my army. Moderate, easy. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go home and pick up some more units. Uh, can we buy units every day? No, this is every week. Oh. So I can't go home and buy more units right now before we explore more. Maybe we just go in and attack that wolf group over here and turn. Still out of reach. What is this? Lost hero, once mighty, now dead, but there's also always a silver lining and you may be able to find something useful in their remains. Cape of Winds. Creature speed, hmm, or mercury. We'll take the Cape of Winds, sure. Go explore the map with your hero. Right, right, right. We're going to explore a little bit and then just have some fun. And then in the next episode, we'll start a new, uh, a new run. Fresh. Start battle. Uh, come over here and like this. And I'm not going to use any spells in this one, but I'll hold my hero back so he doesn't get murdered. I don't know. He seems to recharge all of his health. Maybe he is supposed to be like a tank a bit. Oh man, I love this. This is so cool. The one thing I always like kind of bugged me with Heroes of Might and Magic that the any unit, no matter how many of you them you had, was just represented by one you know, blob with a number, and that didn't feel like you really had a thousand unit when, units when you had a thousand units. This is taking it in the other direction. I love it. Giving each unit a representation based on how many of them you have. I don't know what I picked up there. I was so excited. Oh, I should build a building. Treasure experience points. Yes. We can gain archery. Gives ranged units in your army a chance to fire true strike projectiles which strike a larger area and deal extra damage scaling to the size of the enemy. Oh. Starting at two times. Also increase the range of attacks. Very useful. Oh, obviously stuff like AoE will in this game become super valuable when you've got so many little units running around on the field. We already have this one down here. Legion. And we're about to gain knowledge, I think. There's a little plus here. Hmm. Mastery. Recruits, you, recruits Jotun for this army over time. Or a Thunder God if your hero already has any in their army. At an average rate of 0 0.49 per week per rank. Oh, that's not a whole lot, huh? Jotun and Thunder God gain extra health and damage for each rank. Oh, I kind of want to see what a Jotun is. Oh, the other thing seems like it was would have been really good. Um, did we get any Jotun immediately? We did not. And we got a chest piece here, Tunic of Mayhem. Plus one Legion skill. Ah, so that's how we gain this thing here. Increases the health of all creatures and damage of all creatures. Especially useful with basic creatures. Sure, because you get more of them. Uh, part of Echo set. Part of Titan set. Okay. Well... Now, we should head back to town. We won't arrive this turn. Maybe we can kick this guy's butt before we go home and buy stuff. Let's buy a building now, and let's not forget. Maybe even have a little inspection here. There's the Plaza of Arcane. Increases gold per day. There must be a way to upgrade that kind of stuff more. Income. Dwelling that allows you to create golem and ice sculptor. sculpture. Weekly number of units is four and four respectively. We should definitely get another unit production facility before the end of the week. Arcane Spire gives all heroes a zero mana spell with extra power. Whichever, whenever cast, the spell changes to other, another random one. Oh, interesting. Aether Forge. 
allows wizards and artisans to spend their aether for bonuses. Guild of Mages unlocks four spells, two minor spells and one major spell and a town portal. To learn town portal requires a hero level five. Fort. Let's get the Hall of Shaving. Here's a ranged unit, the Ice Sculptor or a Golem. I think I want another melee tank unit, kind of like the Gargoyle. So, buy that. And this one can be upgraded, but of course not today. So if we go here, we can now say create four of these to be picked up. End turn. Tomorrow, a new week starts. This makes all enemies stronger. Oh, but you also gain new units in, t in town from all the army buildings you have constructed. Okay, so there's an escalation going on in the world map. Okay. I don't know the significance of splitting them up, really. The units. I think we do it like, kind of like this. I wonder what happens if I just sacrifice my leader. I'm like, uh, I'm kind of re ready to end this playthrough here. Let's just try to sacrifice the leader and see what happens. In he goes. Oh, we got a lot of mana now. So he just retreats. Look at that. And is now out of the fight. So are we not punished for that? It doesn't seem to be like that, which means you should always tank with your hero. Aha. Uh -huh. Decrease the cost of resources creating units in any of the town by 20% per rank. That's going to be relevant tomorrow. Let's get that now. The royalty. Or movement. No path found. All right, it is time to head home. We could move around a bit. I'll move over here. Need to stay here to pick up new units soon. Daily income, where's my money? Like here, I'm wondering what we can afford. Upgrade a hall of shaping, but I think we should get the fort. It greatly increases the weekly number of units from a chosen dwelling in town. Okay, from one of them. Right. So wouldn't it be better to just upgrade? Oh, allows you to upgrade Goblin Gunner into Goblin Guard. Gargoyle into Stone Watcher. Gotham into Automatons. Let's get uh, Gargoyles into Stone Watchers. Great. And there they are. Taunt. This creature attacks attention and enemies are more likely to target it than other nearby allies. This one has warding on it. Sturdy. Difficult to knock back and has more health. Creature has a chance to avoid damage from elite creatures and has a high chance of being unaffected by spells. Ooh. Alright. End the turn. Buy new units. Uh, here. Create max. And that's a nice button, by the way. Can we get anything else? I'm, I don't, like I said, I'm gonna end this playthrough soon. So let's just get like Splooge. Ivory Palace has crown to township, has grown to township. So we can get a Grand Bazaar and greatly increase the exchange rate for trading resources. Enchanted wares improves the quality of artifacts so that the artificer or Goblin Gunner expert greatly increase the weekly growth of Goblin Gunner and Goblin Guard. Sure. Done. Recruit. Max and upgrade. They are still projectile units. With quick strife now. Okay. Done. Now this one's easy. Moderate? Oh, moderate still here for the bears. 
Let us attack the Beholder down here. You could send your hero home to collect new units in town. Instead, build a tavern in town, then hire a hero using it. Oh, should've done that. Control battle, skip to outcome. Control battle. Watcher. Ranged unit. Chocolate, sturdy. Gorgon petrification. Enemies struck by this creature have a chance to become petrified. And we are immune to that with our inert units. They are like locked together, these two? Interesting. Why? So I split them up. Okay. We can split up the gunners. Like so. Where's my mana? Can I see my mana on this screen? No. Okay. Start battle. 26 though. Let's attack the ranged units back here. Look at my army for glory. Oh, my hero can be petrified, of course. Right. And the little uh, gargoyles are flying up with units and like lifting them off the ground. Look at that. <laughs> and dropping them from high. Nice. So this is like a kill, kill animation that probably also denies them their final attack or something. No unit lost. So now we're starting to wonder if the Ultra Resolve in this game is better than in Total War. <laughs> uh, crystal or XP? XP, obviously. Here. Take another battle. Let's say we skip to um, outcome. We lost nothing. Aha. So I can upgrade this further, or we can go learning. With the rate at which your hero gains XP goes up. Wisdom teaches your hero a new spell. Each time they level up, they gain have a 25% chance per rank to learn a new spell. Higher ranks teach you more powerful spells, and recruitment increases the weekly growth of units in all your towns. All right. Let's get more XP. A new Dusk Mage's Cape. Spell power versus creature speed. We'll go spell power. They wanted me to build the tavern. Maybe we're still in the tutorial mode. Tavern, tavern, tavern here. Allows you to recruit heroes. The small the heroes come with a small army and start with a, a start price of two thousand five hundred gold. We can afford that, increasing for each purchase within a single week. Okay. Did I already build a building this turn? I think I did. Right. In turn. Oh, there are enemies. Tavern. And the tavern is here. There's a new hero, she's level 2, Thysian, Thysania, who seems like a mage. She's come with, she's coming in with air, Erthomancy, Regeneration and Pyromancy. Recruit hero. This hero works just like your first hero. You can give them new units and then send them two heroes to meet out in the world. Okay. Uh, I think that's... A, uh, an encouragement to do so. So, there, now they have met. When two heroes met, meet, they can exchange units. You can drag units between armies or right-click to quickly switch them from one hero to the other. You can put, either put all heroes with all units with one hero or split your forces. For now, give all your heroes to the strongest hero. Yeah. Classic strategy. Oh, but, ah, there's another thing. She might as well gain... Well, she will do better with the spell power, but I don't want to use her a whole lot, so I th I'll take the spell power on the, the character that I actually use. Done. Go. So, to the north of your town, there is a mountain pass leading into a new area. Your army should be strong enough to de defeat the creatures guarding the mountain pass. Go and take them out. There, easy. Notif, a wish. 
Whatever hero picks this up will outgrow their peers. Hmm. Yeah, sure, we'll go north. You can pick up that ore there. And I don't know, maybe explore a bit in turn. So I bet you it'll end with a battle against the, uh, the other player up here. To the north of your town. Right, right, right. Uh, here we have leeches. They leech life. When this creature deals damage, it will store health to itself equal to the one-fourth of the damage dealt. Nice. And corp corpse eater. Slowing. It has leap and venom. Enemies struck by this creature have a chance to become poisoned. Poisoned creatures will take damage for the rest of the battle. Stalker enemies take slightly more damage. But we are immune to poison. Aha. So it seems like all my, uh, my, what, um, melee units are glued to each other and my ranged units get glued to each other, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Here, there, leader in front. Go, 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 start battle. Fire at will! Oh, and we should cast a spell uh, here. Split their forces. Might have been good to like see if we got a lot of units not firing. We should split out our range units a bit more. So they're not so blobbed. Player one. We lose one Goblin Guard and two Gargoyles. Oh, I didn't upgrade these units. That's why we have extra stacks. I see. What is this? Situl Stone. When visiting the Situl Stone allows you to hero to spend resources to gain a magical skill. Uh, rank 1 Regeneration. Increase the rate of mana regeneration through knowledge by 15% uh, per rank and also regenerates 2 extra mana per rank per day. Wow, okay, that's a lot of mana regen then. Very cool. Speaking of spells then, why don't we build the Arcane... Spire. No, the Guild of Mages. Unlocks spells. Gives any visiting hero spell power once per hero. Ah, should have done that earlier. But now we should have access to some spells, maybe? Maybe? Uh, where's that tower? Guild of Mages. Here, look at it. Look. Okay, so a visiting hero here gains plus one spell power. I'll send her off to explore in this direction. And lo and behold, there is stuff to pick up. We can get Mercury. In turn. Wait, did it not end turn? He's tired. What does that mean? Interesting. What is this? First aid tent. Ballista. He's tired, but what does it mean? He doesn't seem to get any movement points then. Which means what? Axe of the Slayer. Ooh, basic weapon. Get it. I would think that the tiredness means that he has to go to town maybe to rest but he was just there and if he can't move he can't go there strange maybe he needs to stand still for a turn or something like that camp makes the hero make a camp increases attack air air attack area and increases attack defense by two but hero cannot move meanwhile increase the resource gain from the closest mine by 50 percent interesting clues Order. Oh, not ready for this yet. Lexicon. No, that's the same. I suppose we make camp. There. And turn.
And then he still cannot move. Strange. Hmm. Okay, well, we are going to bank on it changing next turn. Plate mail. All right, it's time to send her home. Pick up new units. We can move around with the arrow keys. We'll pick up new units and give it to him. And turn. There, now he can move again. Okay, not sure I understand that mechanic yet, but I'm sure it'll come around. Let's skip to outcome of this battle. Okay, we did lose some Goblin Garden stuff. Warding gives units a chance to ignore attacks by large enemy units. Now I'll get the range thing, the archery. Done. Black Market. Visiting the Black Market allows you to purchase magic-oriented artifacts. Not right now. Treasure chest. Mail gloves or heavy cape. I don't think I want to use any of these because we have better stuff. Basic gloves plus three attack is better, I think. When your army is big enough, some of your units will have to stay in a reserve, waiting until later in a fight to join in the fray. You can drag out the reserve to switch unit, which units are benched. Interesting. That's not happening yet, though. There. No idea how this is going to play out, but we'll see. Uh, start battle. So we didn't gain new spells with this hero yet. Interesting. Okay. Kill them. They're fairly sturdy, they don't just die. Okay. And we've broken through the wall and the gate. We're not shooting at the guys in the towers, so they're like yeah, just part of the tower, I suppose. Lost a little bit of units, but not that much. You should be ready for the game now. There's more stuff to explore in the land of lava, and north of what of that there is is where the enemy player lives. They play by the same rules that you do, even if it's a brain even if its brain is a computer. Do your best to win. Good luck. And we gotta level up here. Bodyguards. Adds bodyguards to the hero's army during combat. Ooh. Interesting, so we like in a fort here. Do we have the enemy player readily available? No. Now I think this will be the end of this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed the first step into our foray with Heroes. <laughs> Heroes Hour, right. <clears throat> Didn't forget the name of the game, I swear. So uh, we'll next time we'll play a proper playthrough or start one up anyway. And I hope it'll be fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed and see you around. This is Kitchen signing off for now. Bye-bye.